Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and my guest today is Brad Sullivan. Hey, Brad. Hey, how's it going? Good. Brad is a program manager on the Visual Studio Diagnostics team and is here today to show us a very cool feature coming in Visual Studio 2013, and that is asynchronous debugging. Yes. Um, so for, uh, for the preview release of Visual Studio 2013, uh, we have some features that uh, enhance the um, asynchronous debugging experience uh, within Visual Studio. And we've built this across uh, JavaScript, um, native code, and managed code. Mm -hmm. um, so you get it for all three, um, all at once. And today I'm going to uh, show you um, what some of those features look like. OK. So, so we're getting asynchronous debugging, which kind of implies that today, with Visual Studio 2012, I'm doing synchronous debugging. Yes. <laughs> is, that, um, is that right? Yes. So <laughs> when, you're, when you're debugging asynchronous code today, uh, it's very easy to get lost mm -hmm. um, and to not understand where you are. And so we've built these features to help orient the user um, in the right, and point them in the right direction so they can understand the state of their code when they're making uh, asynchronous okay. calls. Cool. So let's see. OK, so the first thing that I'm going to show uh, is uh, some JavaScript code uh, that I have up here. Um, and this is a, uh, this is a JavaScript uh, Windows web app uh, running on uh, Windows 8.1. And so a Windows Store app. Yes, it is a okay. Windows Store app. Um, and I'm just going to uh, quickly uh, select a picture. So I'll select this picture of the uh, Space Needle here. And you'll see that what's happened is uh, we got an exception. Uh, and the exception has some uh, somewhat interesting uh, error message uh, information. Um, so it says, uh, WinRT information, an item cannot be found with the specified name captain.text. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, break at that exception. Um, but if you look at the call stack window here, um, you can see that uh, essentially, I've, I've shrunk it down to give you the Visual Studio 2012 view, uh, which is just uh, these uh, three frames. And you can see that uh, you're currently um, in a function called uh, uh, in, in this post error, where it's just kind of throwing the error. Right. And from that, I don't, really, I don't really know what's going on. I'm not in my code, so I'm not right. really. You just know that something caused an error and dumped you here. And you have to kind of guess based on where you were in the app where that came from. Right. So, um, yeah. And if I if I click around on here, you know, I I don't really I don't really get anything useful. So I'm going to expand the size of the call stack, and now you can see uh, what we've added for Visual Studio 2013. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is this. Uh, Annotated frame, an annotated frame is any frame in the call stack window that we, we put in brackets. It's not a real code frame. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that it's, a, it's an async call. And we actually have a few of them. And so what we've done is we've actually built up the chain of asynchronous calls mm -hmm. and have given you all of the code that um, led to the error. So you get the, the full causality. Um, and if you search through uh, this function, uh, these, these functions here, you can see that, well, there's a, there's a bunch of other sort of error glue code um, that's function code. And it's not really your code. Uh, but before that, um, you can see uh, there's a function in default.js, and that's my code. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to uh, click on that. And, uh, and so it takes me um, to my code. Um, and in my code, I can see exactly where that uh, error actually very was. Very nice. So um, I can see, oh, here's where that capped on dot, uh, dot text file was. And if I actually look in my documents library, I can see that, oh, it's a caption, not a capped on. Um, and so that, that was the, the typo, that was the bug in my application. So now. I run this. I do not. I no longer get that that, that exception. Okay. So, uh, like I said, uh, this uh, this feature um, we've I showed you it in JavaScript, but mm -hmm. uh, we've actually implemented it uh, across JavaScript, uh, native, and uh, managed code. So. Um, 
the native experience is very similar to um, it's very similar to the JavaScript experience, mm -hmm. uh, where we've had these uh, these captured stacks that we're sort of gluing on and and creating a um, a causality stack with these annotated frames, complete with code navigation. Um, but I'm going to show you uh, one thing that's interesting uh, that we added. So this is now a XAML Windows Store app built on Windows 8.1. Uh, yes. Correct. Okay. Um, so this is yes a native uh, XAML store app, um, and so with C plus plus, got it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. So um, I've stopped at a breakpoint, and uh, what you can see is that I'm stopped uh, in this lambda here. And there's a whole bunch of code um, that I don't really know what it does. You can see it's sort of in um, concurrency libraries and everything. So, um, so while we added the same uh, that same functionality for JavaScript into native, um, we felt that that wasn't quite enough mm -hmm. um, because there was still so much um, goo code around. So this motivated us to um, to implement uh, a, uh, a a first version of uh, just my code um, for for native oh. for C++ okay. code, and so. Um, I can turn that on. It's actually on by default, but I just turned it off for the sake of this demo. So it's under options and settings. Uh, just enable just my code. And when I do that, ah, now I get a much cleaner call yes. stack. And so now I can find where my, uh, where my native calls were. And I still get this async call mm -hmm. annotated frame. And I can find where, where I'm really coming from and, and navigate to source. Um, so you can. Uh, we so is that just my code? So you're saying that's new to C++ in Visual Studio 2013, for both store apps and regular desktop apps? Yes, it cool. is. Uh, it is actually there for um, any uh, C++ app. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like I said, you can turn it on and off. Um, you know, through uh, the tools option setting. Um, you can also sort of uh, temporarily. Uh, Turn it off um, through the the call stack window. So if you wanted to see the external code frames okay. um, that I'm hiding, you can expand those, yeah. um, and then um, you can you can rehide them. Cool. Uh, so it's it's highly customizable. Um, so uh, we've sort of built in some defaults, um, but if you wanted to uh, change it, oops, uh, in the visualizers folder, there's actually a um, there's a default dot uh, nat jmc file, and this is an, an XML file. And if you open it in uh, Visual Studio, uh, you can see uh, what types of, of code we're hiding uh, mm -hmm. with just okay. my code on. Um, so we're hiding uh, Windows code, we're hiding CRT code, CLR code, um, uh, header files, uh, included header files. Uh, generated files uh, and um, some additional uh, CRT uh, exception um, mm -hmm. glue code. So uh, because of that, uh, if if there were any, if you had any other libraries that you use often um, from a third party, but you wanted to hide them, you could you could add to this file. Um, if there were things that uh, you, for example, didn't want to hide, you could comment that out of this file. Yep. Um, create your own separate files, uh, customize it like that. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to show you the uh, the managed experience, and managed is a little bit different uh, from the um, from the managed and uh, from the JavaScript and native experiences. So this is just a uh, this is just a basic um, basic app, um, a, a basic C -sharp XAML app. Open XAML Windows Store app. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've stopped at a breakpoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, for for managed code, we've decided to uh, rely on the await uh, coding pattern uh, for our uh, asynchronous call stack implementation. And uh, essentially, we build up a uh, a return stack. Um, so it's a all, all stacks are really return stacks because 
once a function completes and returns, it goes to the, the next frame. Um, and so uh, when you await, uh, we actually also get uh, a, you know, some, some return function data that's, that's actually stored um, and held around. And so we okay. can recreate uh, a return stack because, uh, because in the managed await pattern, you really have asynchronous functions calling asynchronous functions calling asynchronous right. functions. And you, you tend to, to build up that way. Um, and the, the great thing about the, the managed uh, scenario is that uh, when I switch frames, I actually get uh, local variables, uh, which is different from the JavaScript or the uh, native scenario. Okay. So you get a little bit more information. You can um, find out a little bit more. OK. Um, the other uh, sort of, the, these stacks um, uh, solutions, they sort of answer the question, uh, how did I get here? Because right? you're stopped in a, in a random location. Um, you wouldn't really know, uh, you know what was calling into you, right. how you ended up in that state. Um, there's sort of another uh, type of question that you might ask when you're debugging asynchronous code. And that's really, um, what's going on in my app right now? Mm -hmm. um, so not necessarily anything that n it's not necessarily stuff that caused uh, you to land in the spot you are, but there could be other things going on in the background. Um, and so uh, what we've done is uh, we've sort of uh, repurposed um, one of the windows that we had in the debugger uh, in Visual Studio 2012. Uh, there was a and um, and 2010. There's a there's a window called the parallel tasks window. Okay. So uh, we've replaced that just with the tasks window. And what the tasks window does is it gives you a status of all the asynchronous operations cool. that are going on. Mm -hmm. And again, we did this across, um, across uh, JavaScript uh, native code and managed code. So active means currently running? Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you can see there's a couple different statuses here. I've got mm -hmm. uh, three tasks running because um, you can see uh, how I've built up my, my async calls. Um, you get uh, uh, these these active and scheduled states. So you can see, uh, you know, is it running? Is it not not running yet? Um, this uh, we have a start time and a uh, duration that we show, and uh, those are in seconds, and it's. It's based on uh, when the debugging session started, essentially. Okay. Um, so that can help you figure out, like, hey, do I have, um, do I have one task that's been running for a really long time? Right. If so, I want to isolate that one and see what it is. Um, so you could sort by duration and figure that out. Um, you can see uh, where uh, the where the files are, so uh, where the tasks are. So you can see this one's in get file, mm -hmm. and you can also, um, if you hover over the location. Uh, you get uh, a tooltip that gives you um, the full stack with the async calls, and you can actually um, use those for, you click on that and use that for code navigation okay. as well. Finally, um, you get uh, some information about uh, what the task actually is and, and, and what it's doing. Um, so if you wanted to say, oh, this thing is being awaited by you know the button click, ah, so now right. I, that gives okay. me a little bit more information so I can find which one uh, this actually so is. So this level of detail is available only in managed, not in JavaScript and native. Is that um, correct? Or this is uh, this is available in uh, all three. Okay, excellent. So um, and actually uh, one more thing that uh, I wanted to show you um, was uh, we have a little bit. Uh, more information in uh, JavaScript, actually. So I'm going to switch back to my JavaScript app. I'm going to enable this breakpoint. <laughs> OK, let's bring up the tasks window. You might say, tasks window, well, I thought we had promises in uh, in JavaScript. Well, we, we decided to call it the tasks window. Um, yeah, it'd be kind of confusing if the menu changed depending on where you were at. Yes, especially if you if you were debugging um, a mixed app right. or um, or debugging two apps at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
So the, the interesting thing about uh, JavaScript is you can actually see uh, completed tasks as well. Um, because of the way the instrumentation is working, um, we, actually, uh, we can actually see things that no longer exist. And so okay. um, if you're wondering uh, what has completed, what is not completed, um, and if that helps you tell the difference uh, between which task is which, mm -hmm. um, we can provide you that data. Okay. Um, in JavaScript. Um, so one thing that uh, you might notice is that uh, this uh, get file async uh, is still active and um, if I click on that you can see that belongs to this this file here and as you expect the file is undefined because right. of that. So if I were to um, uh, you know try to read this caption and, and put it up and it wasn't it wasn't showing yep. up like this is how I could diagnose a problem like that like oh this hasn't this this task hasn't completed yet where yeah. where my image load um, actually has uh, completed. That's excellent to see at a glance which of the methods which of your async methods are still running and done rather than today you have to go to that variable file hover over it and see that it's undefined which then kind of tells you it, it isn't done but here you get to see all of them in one pane that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's um, so that's the tour. That's uh, that's what we're um, going to be shipping at uh, at preview. Okay. Um, you know, and we're really excited uh, for for people to try it out and to see um, what kind of uh, feedback we can get on this, so we can uh, make this uh, really as great of an experience as possible, especially where um, where uh, asynchronous patterns are so pervasive mm -hmm. in in right. store applications. Yep. So, so far we've looked just at Windows Store applications and in particular, Windows Store applications that are targeting 8.1. So, is this, so the question is, is this a feature of 8.1 store applications? Um, or is it, is it available only in those? Is it available um, in Windows 8 applications, in .NET applications? Is it Rely sure. on a particular version of Windows. So this is a uh, this is this. a Windows 8.1 feature. Okay. Um, however, it's not specific to to store applications. Uh, so there's a there's a new technology built into Windows itself uh, that these features uh, rely on. Okay. Um, and so uh, you can even write desktop apps, um, and you will still get these features if you're using uh, Windows 8.1. Um, so desktop apps, web apps. Yep, okay. web apps as well. Um, phone um, apps. Um, phone apps is a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> phone apps is a, uh, is a is a is a TBD. Okay. Um, All right. Good. Fair enough. So, so it's a. It, this feature is made possible because of things that were added to Windows 8.1. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, yes. Exactly. And uh, there is one. Um, there is one part of this feature that does work. Um, on earlier OSs, um, so if you do eight, only eight or seven as well. Um, so actually, uh, the the native call stacks work uh, will work uh, wherever you have uh, the latest CRT. Okay. Um, just the call stacks part. So okay. Um, if if Visual Studio installs that on that operating system and installs the CRT with it, uh, then that feature will work. Okay, so, so so that's the one exception. So one feature will work on seven, eight, and eight one, and the full capability on eight point one, but for desktop web and store apps. So mm -hmm. this isn't just a store feature. Right. It was uh, highly feature. motivated by store features. Of course. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's a great feature for um, for all kinds of apps and cool. um, yeah, web apps as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So. Uh, you mentioned that you were looking for feedback. Is there a place where people should go uh, to provide feedback? Yes, there's a, so there's a couple places. Um, so one uh, is the uh, Visual Studio um, ALM blog, which is where we put um, all of our diagnostics uh, content. Okay. And we'll have a lot of content rolling out uh, for this feature. Um, there'll be more information on the Just My Code feature uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, that we'll be rolling out um, over the next uh, several weeks. And um, so that's a great place to get information. You can comment on our blog posts. It's a great way for us to get information. 
Uh, also, there's a, a Visual Studio Diagnostics forum okay. um, where you can ask questions. Um, and the forum also uh, has links to um, filing a connect bug yep. if you think that the feature is broken in some scenario. We would love to mm -hmm. uh, know that so we can fix it. Um, and also uh, links out to our user voice right. site where if you have additional feature suggestions, you can make those requests and vote on other requests right. that you find interesting. Cool. Awesome stuff. All right. That is a very cool feature. <laughs> All right, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, go get Visual Studio 2013 preview and check out this feature as well as all the other things that are in 2013. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.